Hi there, are you new to HomeKit or you've been using HomeKit for a long time and you're a little bit confused what a HomeKit hub is and the difference between a HomeKit bridge? Then continue to watch this video to find out more. Hi, welcome back and my name is John from HomeKit Authority. This channel is dedicated to HomeKit news, reviews and tutorials. So if you're new around here and you're not already subscribed, then hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. Also, don't forget if you like this video, give me a thumbs up as that's greatly appreciated. Uh, so this video is part of the Getting to Know HomeKit series and we're going to be covering HomeKit hubs. Now you may have already started with HomeKit and you may have got some lights or a smart lock or some thermostats and you're wanting to expand your home kit and you're wanting to do things like automations and remote control. This is where a home kit hub comes into play and it's really important that you understand the difference between a home kit hub and a home kit bridge. So in this video I'm going to talk you through what is a home kit hub and what it can be used for, what types of home kit hubs you can buy, uh, the differences between a home kit hub and a home kit bridge and also how to set them up and also where to position them in your home and finally any troubleshooting that you may have to do uh, so continue to watch this video to find out more okay so starting out why you need a home kit hub and also what is a home kit hub so you may have already started out with home kit you're controlling your lights or your smart accessories through the omap now, one of the things that you'll find that's missing is automations and to be able to remotely control your apps from when you're outside your home. For instance, if you've left the light on, you might want to turn it off remotely or you might want to use automations that are triggered when you're approaching home or when certain events will happen. And for this, you need a HomeKit hub. Now, you also need a HomeKit hub to use HomeKit Secure Video. Now, this is one of Apple's newest features that work with HomeKit enabled cameras that have got HomeKit Secure Video enabled on them. Now, I've already done a video on HomeKit Secure Video. You can check that out and it's coming above now, but you need a HomeKit hub in order to use that. Okay, so which HomeKit hubs can you buy? You're in luck here. There's only three devices that can work as a HomeKit hub, and these are from Apple themselves. There is a Apple TV, which is Apple's uh, streaming media device, which sits within your home and is connected to your TV. You also can use a HomePod, which is Apple's music streaming uh, device. And again, this sits within your home and it's connected to Siri. You also can use a iPad to work as a HomeKit hub. However, my personal opinion is not to recommend this device and it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, the HomeKit hub constantly has to be plugged in and powered on. This means if you've got a device that is used a lot in the house by other people, then especially children may not remember to plug the device in and it will lose power and you will lose remote access and access to automations. The second reason is if you're taking this device outside of the home, those automations, uh, the remote access and HomeKit Secure Video won't work if the device is taken outside of the home as well. So it's really important to choose the right device for you. I personally use a HomePod and Apple TV as my HomeKit hubs, and I would certainly recommend that. Okay, so let's now look at the difference between a HomeKit hub and a HomeKit bridge. Now you may have already got a number of devices in your home that have come with a hub device that connects them to HomeKit and it makes it all work. Now this is not to be confused with a HomeKit hub. This hub device acts as a bridge between your devices and HomeKit and it essentially makes it all work. Also these devices are limited to the manufacturer's accessories. The Philips U hub will work with the IKEA smart bulbs However, they won't expose them to HomeKit. So they are limited there, and this is an ample limitation. And on the other side of things, you've got the HomeKit hub, which only works with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi devices. Now, typically, Eve devices connect to the HomeKit hub. However, devices like Philips U, which use Zigbee, cannot connect to it. So you still need the bridge device. So in short, the HomeKit bridge is a device that comes with your accessories and a HomeKit hub is what makes all the HomeKit magic like automations and the re remote access and the HomeKit secure video. Now let's look at how to set up a HomeKit hub. 
Now, now we know the difference between a HomeKit Hub and a HomeKit Bridge and what you need it for, it's now time to set up that device. But there's one thing to make sure that you're aware of before we do this. Make sure any of the devices that are gonna be the HomeKit Hub that you sign in with your primary iCloud account. This is the lead iCloud account that's connected to HomeKit that leads the HomeKit Home. So setting up an Apple TV, for instance, you're going to settings and user accounts. Then you sign in to the iCloud account that leads the HomeKit Home. Once that's all done, the, the Apple TV will automatically add itself to HomeKit and take over as your HomeKit Hub without any further involvement from you. Similarly with a HomePod, when you're setting a HomePod up for the first time, as long as you sign in with your primary account, the HomePod will also set itself up automatically as a HomeKit Hub. Now moving on to the iPad, this is slightly different and just requires some setup. Now, first of all, make sure you're signed in with the primary iCloud account and check the home is enabled within this iPad. Once you've done that, you go back into settings and then you tap on the home and then select use this iPad as a home hub. Once that's all set up, you can go into the Home app and check the status of your HomeKit Hub. You go into by pressing on the Home symbol at the top and going into the settings. You then scroll around to Hubs and Bridges and you can see which HomeKit Hubs have been enabled. Now, if you've got multiple HomeKit Hubs as I have in my home, these will show them here. It will show them either that your primary one is connected and another that's on standby. Now, this is useful if one of them goes down, the other one will take over as your HomeKit Hub. Let's now look at positioning your HomeKit Hub. Now everything's set up and it's all working, you confirm that the HomeKit Hub is enabled within the OMAP and everything's ready to go. It's really important you think about the position of your HomeKit Hub. For instance, wireless interference from a load of electrical devices or other appliances like microwaves or TV can interfere with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals. So if you've got quite a large home or a lot of electrical devices in your home, have a good think about where you put this device. For instance, you won't want to put your HomePod next to a microwave where every time that microwave off, it might interfere with the Bluetooth signals to say an Eve device. Similarly, I've also heard stories where people have put the Apple TV behind the back of their TV and concealed it. This is also rumored to have interfered with uh, devices. So really have a think about where you position the device. Now I have my HomePod on the side in the kitchen and it's away from other devices and electrical devices. So then this gives a clear signal to all those devices. Now if you're using Eve devices which would that typically rely on the Bluetooth signals for your HomeKit hubs, then again, have a think about where those devices are positioned and you might want to position your HomeKit hub close to these devices. And now next up is troubleshooting. Now you may have run into issues, how you may have trouble with automations or you may not be able to get remote access or you may just be having general trouble with HomeKit devices or your HomeKit hub. Now I've come across a number of these. So I'm gonna share some of my experience. So hopefully this will help you. Now, my first one is make sure all your HomeKit devices are up to date with the latest firmware. This includes all your accessories and all your hubs. And also make sure that your devices are all up to date because this will ensure that any compatibility issues are resolved. Now, the next one is an obvious one. Make sure your devices are connected to the internet, particularly your home kit hubs. If you're having trouble connecting with your devices outside of your home, this is typically why your Wi-Fi is down or you've not connected the device correctly. So make sure that everything is set up. Also make sure any firewall ports are open so you can access your HomeKit hub. And now next one is making sure you're logged in to the same ID, which is your primary ID across all your devices. This will ensure that everything is synced up and then everything just works as it should. If other people are having problems with your home accessing HomeKit accessories or accessing remotely, make sure they're all added to the Home app and they've all also got the relevant configuration set up. So make sure you've granted remote access to all these people and you've given them the correct permissions to access the various different things. Now, if all the others have failed, typically for me, 
when I find that I've tested everything else, simply restarting the HomeKit Hub and all the accessories certainly helps to remove any gremlins. I know this may seem a pretty simple explanation, but I found that I resolve issues just by restarting those devices. So guys, this is the end of the video. Hopefully you found it useful. You've understand what a HomeKit Hub is. You understand how to set it up, the difference between a HomeKit Hub and a HomeKit Bridge. And you've also got some tips as well to troubleshoot. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. And also don't forget to subscribe as more HomeKit videos will be coming out. Also check out the other HomeKit videos that are on the channel as you might find them useful. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.